there were never any devils on that island. Only people. In the end, although she left our forest, the world is a great big forest where everyone's fighting for their life. I reckon Sasha died because she wandered in that forest for too long. Adults need to keep children out of that forest, and it is up to them to shoulder the sins of the past. The children of the forest are one of the many sad realities of Attack on Titan, but sadly it is not fiction. Children being trained as soldiers, growing up in hateful and toxic environment, being trained to hate and to kill, this is reality. And we will talk about it right now. Hello Titan fans and welcome back to my channel for a new Attack on Titan video. This video is the second in my new series focusing on soldiers, battle scenarios and strategic events in Attack on Titan from the point of view of a soldier. My point of view. Today we will talk about the children warriors of Marley, focusing mainly on Gabby and Falco. We will address their situation, childhood and the reason they act and see the world so differently, especially earlier in the story. In addition, we will explore the scene with all the empty cages and of course, I will explain what they represent and why those cages that were not shown in the manga were a very smart addition to that scene. All that and much more is coming right up. And before we begin, this is a great chance to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also, come say hi to me on your favorite social media platform. I'm literally everywhere. The Children of the Forest the children of the forest were first mentioned in Sasha's father's monologue. He compared the never-ending conflict to a giant forest, a forest that the children have been lost in for so long. The children of the forest are the children who are part of that conflict. They fight for reasons and issues that had nothing to do with them, and because of that they never get the life of normal children. Later in the story, we see how General Magath felt sorry for denying them that peaceful childhood and instead made them tools of war that drive on hate and a lot of misinformation. As exaggerated as this scenario may seem to people, I have to be one with the sad news. Gabby's character and the rest of the young warriors are live examples of actual things that are happening today in our world. This is not some local problem, and sadly, you can find it worldwide across different continents. In some situations, these are kids that are separated from their parents from a very young age. They are then given weapon and trained like soldiers, and I'm talking about kids under the age of 10. Of course, there is also a large amount of brainwashing involved here, and the results are young and very confused kids doing unspeakable things they don't understand for themselves. In other places, kids are raised from a young age to hate a specific group of people. This is a well-known thing among terrorist groups that openly enlist kids to the ranks. Being fed lies and false information all their lives, those kids are raised as child warriors, all in order to prove some ideology that is not even their own. It is pushed upon them by adults that are motivated by their own personal agendas. Therefore, it is not the kid's fault. It's the fault of the adults who stole their innocence and childhood and placed them into a conflict they didn't ask for. Nonetheless, at the end of the line, these kids will grow up to be expendable killers. And that is the sad reality. They literally got pushed into a giant forest that has no way out and the ones that do manage to survive are forever changed. From my perspective, and as a person who actually witnessed some of those poor children, I have a very firm opinion about it. If you place a weapon in the hands of an underage child, it just means you weren't brave, strong, or competent enough to do the job on your own. War is absolutely not a place for kids. Your actions are shameless and cowardly, and there is absolutely no way to legitimize them. That is of course my personal perspective, but I hope the logic is clear to most of the people watching. The young warrior cadets were raised the same horrible way. They were raised to feel shameful about their race and history, and to see the people of the island as the enemies of humanity. One way of doing that is by demonizing the enemy because it is easier to kill demons and monsters than actual people. This is why Gabby believes the people of the island are not actual people. For her, they are demons who needs to be rightfully killed. This lie was told to her even by the people she loves and trusts the most, so she has no reason to question that. She practically lived her entire life surrounded by it. Therefore for her, it was simply the only truth. Gabby, Falco, Udo and Zofia grew up at the same toxic environment. Although we don't have a lot of information about Zofia, we do know that Udo is an alien that came from another country. 
Udo provided crucial information that is not so well known to anime watchers, simply because it was almost never mentioned. Udo claimed that the situation of the aliens of Marley is far better than the situation of aliens in other internment zones around the world. So theoretically, the way we see people in Marley treat the aliens is somewhat better than in other countries. One obvious reason is that the aliens were used in war by Marley against other countries who had no way of weaponizing titans. The other reason was the presence of the Tiber family who controlled Marley behind the scene. That is not an excuse for their wrongdoings, but they were also the reason why the Eldians of Marley didn't face the same hate Eldians around the world faced. Unfortunately, Udo and Sofia didn't get a lot of screen time so they didn't have any significant character developments. Unlike Falco and of course Gabby, which probably had the most substantial character development in this entire story. But although they were both raised in the same toxic environment, Gabby and Falco think and act completely different. This is because they came from different backgrounds. Growing up, Gabby was raised the same way Reiner was. After all, Reiner's mom is Gabby's aunt, and she grew up teaching her to hate the island the same way she did with Reiner. And with her uncle as one of the nine, Gabby sees it as an honor to gain the powers of the Armor Titan. With that, she will prove she is the best warrior, and also will be able to use her power finally to destroy the devils of the island. From her perspective, Marley has been good to her, and she wants to fight for its honor and glory, to prove she is a good Eldian, to distinguish herself from her ancestors or the people of the island. Falco's situation is entirely different. Unlike Gabby's family, Falco's family has a big stain in the eyes of Marley. His uncle, only known as Grice, was part of the Eldian Restorationists years ago, the same group led by Grisha that will later find themselves on the gates of Paradise Island. His uncle was that poor guy used as bait to lure away the titans from the walls. That teaches us that unlike Gabby's family which was loyal to Marley, Falco's family had different ideologies about Eldia and the conflict, and maybe some of them weren't raised to be ashamed of their race like Gabby and Reiner did. This is why their families are so different, and unlike Gabby joining the warriors for the honor of it, Colt joined the warriors to atone for his family's bad reputation, and to try to prove to Marley they are loyal to the country. Falco allegedly did the same, only later it was shown he only joined so he could take away the armor titan from Gabby. This was his plan of saving her and making sure she will live a happy life and not die after 13 years. Their different backgrounds are shown in their personalities as well. Out of all of the warriors, it is clear that Gabby is by far the superior one. She allows herself to do things others will never do, like talking back to your commander and being a jerk to your friends. But although she acts in a certain way, you can see from the start she has respect for the people fighting alongside her. One example is when she volunteered to take down the armor train by herself to spare hundreds of Eldians dying trying to take it down. She also proves to be smart enough to whip out a bomb to destroy the train, but not smart enough to understand that Falco is in love with her, and that is also after people pointed it out to her face. Falco, just like Reiner and Zeke, was not meant to be a warrior. You can see it in his introduction when he is found unconscious on the battlefield and rescued by his brother Colt. You can see him also struggle later on in training, although wanting to surpass Gabby always gave him the motivation to improve. It is important to point out that he and the other warrior cadets did survive the four years Marley Mid-East War, so even though Falco struggles, it doesn't mean he is not capable. And even though he is physically less effective, he is not a coward, as we could see how he tried to save Gabby after she blew up the train. But still, we can see that Falco didn't see the battlefield the same way Gabby saw it. Gabby, with her narrow vision, saw the glorious side of the battle and the end goal, while Falco saw it for what it truly is, just another battle with a lot of casualties. When we see him later looking at the individual wounded soldiers, you could see he sees the side effects of war. Falco is one of the most sensible and compassionate characters in the story. You could see it on the battlefield when trying to help an injured enemy soldier, and also later when he was the only one able to recognize Reiner's pain and mental state. He also understood Connie's reasons for wanting to kill him, and by not striking back, he showed how mature, forgiving, and level-minded he is. Falco's kindness was also his greatest downfall when he unknowingly betrayed his nation and delivered letters to an enemy state. 
This comes to show you how realistic Attack on Titan is, and instead of rewarding his kindness, the story, or more precisely Eren, uses Falco's trusting nature to advance his plan. I think this is Isayama's way of telling you, don't take things from strangers you meet in a hospital. But what do I know? You do you. Even after this event, Falco's empathy made it possible for him to understand Eren, even after he used him. He understood that the scouts attacked because Marley invaded Paradis years before. He also now knew that in that process they killed Eren's mom. And he embraced Eren's words about the people inside walls being the same as them. Even though he is very young, he is able to distance himself emotionally in a situation in order to find a solution. This is something Gabby is not good at at all, as she's motivated mostly by her emotions. This what makes Falco able to understand both sides of the conflict. He understands that things happen for a reason, and he tried to explain that to Gabby as well. Gabby refused to even consider his logic, claiming that he didn't see it, so it never happened. That also proved to us how brainwashed she really was at that point compared to him. Even after shooting Sasha, she kept on screaming and threatening to kill all the devils on the ship. On the island, it took Gabby time to realize all those stories she's been told were all lies. Falco already knew that, but for Gabby, it only happened when she met Kaya and the Blaus family, when Sasha's father showed her kindness instead of revenging his daughter. That thing shook the core of Gabby's belief system. She was raised to believe that all the island devils are evil. That is why it was so hard for her to understand why Armin and the rest are being nice to her. Unlike Gabby, who always felt worthy and confident on the battlefield, Falco always felt he wasn't good enough. But as time went by on Paradis and him seeing all those horrible things, and especially after he ingested Zeke's spinal fluid and was sure he will die soon, all that made him confident enough to finally seize the moment and confess his love to Gabby, which of course was a complete surprise to her even at that point. But even after finding the courage to confess his love, and even after losing his brother and gaining his titan, Falco kept on saying Porco was much more deserving of the jaw titan. He also never abused his power, and even when using it, he remained the same humble kid he always was. The Open Cage What is a cage? A cage is a device meant to trap things in. A cage can often protect you from the outside world. A cage is a physical thing, but it can also be a mental thing. For example, clinical depression can be considered a mental cage, preventing you from conducting your life in the way you were used to. For young Eren Jaeger, his cage was the walls preventing him from seeing the outside world. It made his world extremely small simply because he didn't know what was beyond them. Unlike Eren, Gabby did grow up inside the walls of Liberio, but that wasn't a cage for her like the walls were for Eren. She did know about the outside world, and her walls weren't physical obstacles like the walls of Paradis. And of course, she didn't have titans roaming around. Gabby's cage was different because it was a mental cage. Eren was surrounded by walls that kept him from the truth, while Gabby was surrounded by a wall of fake news that served the exact same thing. From a young age, those fake stories about the island devils shaped her mind. She grew up believing everything, and she actually believed killing all the devils will save the world, and that she could do it on her own. Like Eren, her world was so small because she was living according to a very one-sided, very toxic narrative. That's why it felt perfectly reasonable for her that all the island devils are evil, even though she never met one before. During her time on the island, Gabby's mental cage is constantly shaken every time she sees something that contradicts her beliefs. You can see how those beliefs are embedded in her when she refuses to remove her Eldian armband, because this is the only thing distinguishing her from the devils of the island. Because her set of beliefs is so strong, letting go of those beliefs is obviously much harder. That is why she constantly struggles to interact with Kaya and the Blaus family. After she finds out she killed Kaya's sister, and after she received so much love from the Blaus family, Gabby finally comes to a realization. Her internal conflict turns into shame and understanding of how wrong she acted. She now sees how small her world was behind the walls of lies. And with an image of an empty and open cage in the background, Gabby finally understands Falco and all of Reiner's stories about the island. And in one of her most beautiful moments, she delivers one of the strongest points and messages of this story. There were never any devils on that island. Only people.
with the open cage, signifying her breaking out from her mental cage and seeing how small it is when you look at it from the outside. And with those empty cages left behind, Gabby is now able to finally grow and develop as a character. She is finally free. In a perfect world, there would be no wars. But even in the most deranged world possible, kids should never meet the battlefield. They should not learn to hate. They should not learn to fear. And they should not lose their innocence. Let them be kids just for a little while longer. And may the children of the forest will finally find a way to the forest clearing. Thank you so much for joining me today, my titan-loving friends, and I hope you enjoyed this second video in my soldier series. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, like, and to let me know which character, event, or battle strategy you want me to cover next. I will see you all real soon in my next video, and even sooner in the comments. But until then, just remember, there are no devils on that island. Only people. So dedicate your hearts to all of humanity, inside and outside the walls.